Hello and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Now that we're back in uh, just south of Hyrule uh, Castle Town, uh, let's actually get this out. We're gonna get this out of the way first, so that way we have more of these marks to travel around to. Also, thank you to the commentator who said it was the Ocarina of Wind that lets you travel. Just like the, uh, the flute, quote unquote, from A Link to the Past, which was an Ocarina. Now down here is a fairy's fountain in the wall. Uh, we're just going to open it up for uh, so we can use it later if we need to be stuck on fairies. And I think that's it for here for now. So what I want to introduce you to now is the other game mechanic this uh, game has called uh, Kinstones. Or Kinstone Fusing, whichever you want to call it. Essentially, you have half of a stone. It's like a puzzle piece, and you combine it with someone else's half of a kinstone, and if they fit, they'll combine together and unlock some sort of treasure, uh, more rupees, a heart piece, things like that. So they're really useful to get. Now there are four types of kinstones. Green kinstones, which you can find everywhere, including in grass, if you look for it, and in rocks, too. Uh, Blue kinstones, which are rare and you can only find in treasure chests. Red kinstones, which are really rare and you have to find in like treasure chests and dungeons and things of the like. And gold kinstones, which are necessary to move on with the story or certain elements of the game. As you can see, we fused the kinstones and they got rid of the vines on that area. And now we can now enter that like tree area. And there's a heart piece in there, and that'll give us our fifth heart. Now, if I'm correct, green kinstones don't really start showing up a lot until after the second dungeon. But from this point on, I'm gonna have to like cut grass everywhere. So if you if I'm cutting if you think I'm cutting grass too much, I apologize. But I'm just searching for green kinstones because they are in grass. You can find them. But, um, as you'll see through the videos, I don't find one for a long time. Even though in other playthroughs, like the other times i played the game, I found them really early and everywhere too. In this playthrough though, I wasn't so lucky. Anyways, in here, uh, we'll go in here in a moment and get the fifth heart, the fourth piece of heart, and our fifth heart container, that's right. Alright. Now that we have that done, again, I'm gonna check the grass. And then we're gonna go back in the high and take care of some things. Including getting a new sword technique. And this is the guy who gives you the new techniques. His first technique he'll give you automatically, and also he has the yellow Nico from Wind Waker, which I don't understand either. But again, it's just a recycled voice clip. It basically, it's the uh, spin attack. If I'm correct, it's the second or third one where he actually allows you to break jars with your sword. Which is strange, because they they usually give you that power initially to break jars with your sword, but in this game, no. You have to earn that power. <laughs> Oh yeah, he has like seven techniques, and if you get all his tiger scrolls, you can take them to his ancestor, or another swordsman type teacher later in the game, and he'll teach you another technique. Can't remember where that is. Uh, and if we clear this area here, we can get another merchant to open up later in the game. And also in the merchant pad in the upper left corner, a Goron will go there eventually, and uh... And um, he'll sell kinstones. Basically, we're just trying to get past this guy, and he doesn't let you pass until you know the spin attack. Now, in this area, there's some weird, there are some weird fox creatures with daggers. They're like little thieves, but they just take two hits. I really don't understand what they are, though. I guess they're like those fox creatures from Japanese folklore that I can't remember the names of. And again, I apologize for my ignorance in terms of certain, um, certain folklore. Yeah, 
Yes, we need this bottle to move on, so we'll buy it. Also, we're gonna get a lot of rupees in the next uh, area, so it's not like we uh, need these rupees right now. Especially, again, our wallet only carries 100 rupees, which is very unfortunate. But once we get done with the second dungeon, we'll find a lot more rupees. Also, it is good to collect mysterious shells if you're interested in figurine collecting. Which again, we'll uh, get into later once we can get to it. We can't get to it yet, because the area is blocked off by a dog. Again, I'm sorry I'm breaking all these rocks in this part of the video, but again, I'm just searching for kinstones. Green kinstones, because they show up in rocks and grass. Oh yeah, if you bomb this wall and go in there, the Deku scrub there will tell you that the guy who sells the bottle has something you need. Which is the bottle, which we already got, so... It's pointless, but I'm just showing this to... So that you know you can find him here. Pretty much what he says. Oh yeah, this cave also has bombs in it, so get those if you need them. But yes, we need water. Just get some water from there. Pour it on the plant, and you're done. Oh, but don't refill your bottle with water just yet. And if you noticed a second ago in the bottom left-hand corner, I missed the red ruby. But that's not important, because our wallet gets filled up soon enough anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Another fairy found. Right. Oops. Yeah, sometimes you'll accidentally drop bombs, so usually I switch the bomb out, but sometimes I forget to, and then I'll accidentally drop a bomb without meaning to. Because I'm trying to use something like the gust jar, and I forget I have the bombs out instead. I forgot what those spider-like enemies are called. Anyways, place a bomb right there on the wall, it'll explode. Red chew jellies, which are pretty easy to defeat. And this is where we'll get an important item we need for a little later. The Mount Cranel, uh mineral water. The mineral water is needed to get up to the top of the mountain, so we need to collect a bottle of that. Alright, Ezlo is just basically reminding us that there are portals everywhere, as we'll see once we get to Hyrule Castle Town after we're done with all this here on Mount Crenel. You know, I'm guessing those little things are like little bugs or little mites or something like that. I'm not sure what they're called. They look like they have faces like Skultula, but they're not exactly Skultula. And again, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, forgive me. Again, I don't know all these pronunciations but I try my best. And if you notice that sudden cut there in the video, that basically means the feet, uh, originally when I, uh, recorded this video, it recorded just fine and it looked fine, but when I finally tried editing it, it said the video file was corrupted, so that part I had to replace and reconvert. Uh, well not replace, I just had to reconvert it and then it was fine. So if you notice any difference or any uh, awkward cutting, then that's just because the video got corrupted and it lost certain portions of footage. But you shouldn't see anything significant from this point onward of that. I've checked the files now and they're all fine. I tell you though, technology is a pain. Anyways, back to the 
Ah, also here's a little neat trick, uh, if you don't like killing these bats, uh, just suck them up in the gust jar. You'll kill them instantly. Pretty useful when you use the gust jar. Oh, also these creatures. These creatures from the pointy beaks just suck off their masks. And if you want to, suck them into the gust jar and spit them back at other enemies. They got the tornado idea from Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. If you remember in that game, you had Mario and Luigi stand on top of each other and uh, use a tornado group, and then they'd use the tornadoes to uh, fly around other platforms. Sort of like um, how Link does in this game, except he uses his uh, hat as a parachute. I don't know. Oh, but if you uh, bomb the wall up here next to the trees, a cave will open, and I think you can get a blue pinstone piece in here if I'm if I uh, remember correctly. Alright, you can get a kinstone piece and a heart piece and I think some piece. There's the kinstone piece. There's a little piece, 50 of them, so our wall is full. And there's a the heart piece. Alright. Ah, and here's where we're gonna need the mineral water once we uh, climb up the ladder. I'm nearly on the bombs. At this point. Under there is the uh, another uh, portal to the mission world. Yeah, ju I just want to get those flies out of the way. Although they're still there when you shrink down the sides and you still have to kill them. So we're going to shrink down the size now and uh, explore these little openings. The first one is sort of like a mini dungeon. And you get a blue concealment piece in there. And I screwed up and I just went off the first the edge of the platform instantly. pretty much mentions that the uh, green bean sort of thing need uh, mineral water to grow, but we already have that, so we don't need his advice, we already have the mineral water. Yes, and I forgot to actually go get the uh, seed, which I need to put in that hole over there. Alright, so this video is about to end, so I'll thank you again for watching. Again, if you have any suggestions, suggestions or comments, uh, please feel free to uh, leave them here. I'd really like to hear them. Um, and again, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.